big world will never grow old. We got to make one. Thank God.
when I seen you all made it out. Amen. Down in Spartanburg, we had three-fourths of an inch, and the grass was sticking through the snow. Amen. God is good. Amen. <laughs> but I hear tell some of y'all's had your power off, and it's been a little slick. I tell you, but you're here. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. Good to see you. We decided we'd come up last night and just dig in and hope for the best. So here we are. And here y'all are. Let's let's praise the Lord today, will you? Ain't got to be nowhere. Ain't got no plans just to love him and serve him today. Have we got any ushers in the house tonight? Some good looking ushers. Can we get the A team up here? The A team. <laughs> I thought Teresa was going to usher. <laughs> Come on and stand up if you will. This would be a great day. Don't you know that the Lord is keeping record today of who's here? This is your opportunity to praise him and thank him and, 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 and pay a homage to him because he's so good. I think we ought to do it. I think we ought to just be like Pal Young, let her hair down. And praise the Lord. Pal, if you're since you're here, would you mind praying over the offering, please, buddy? Yes, God, we do. We thank you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Thank God. Sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved an old wretch like me. Sing it out this morning. Sang wonderfully. You can sit down. I look out over the congregation and I look to my left and my right and I see a bunch of miracles. I see a bunch of 
of people that got in that I didn't think would ever get in. Yeah, it's it's up up yes. It is not up to me to who decides to get in and who doesn't. God knows exactly what yes. buttons to push yes. to get you right where he wants you. Amen. Shannon, raise your hand up there. This don't look like Shannon, but that's Shannon over there. Hey. Come, can you testify for us, brother? Somebody grab pal to so they anchor him down here. I think it's going to be something. We're glad to see you. At one time or another, somebody in this church has been praying for you. Uh, I do appreciate all those prayers. I, I really do. Uh, I never imagined being back in church. Uh, I, I really never imagined being anywhere besides the penitentiary for quite a while. And, uh, and I, thank God he come by and, and showed me that that's not where I need to be. And, uh, and I'm, here, I'm here today just by the prayers and by the grace of God. And, uh, I, I do appreciate all those prayers. That was worse. Just yeah. watching Louise Pittman raise her hand. Hey. <laughs> Louise, how long have you been raising your hand for the Lord? How long have you been, <laughs> how long, how long have you been serving the Lord? Praise the Lord. Fourteen. Seen a lot of changes, haven't you? But God ain't changed. God never changes. Amen. Ursula, have you got enough food prepared for all of us to come home and eat with y'all? <laughs> Anybody else in the praise of the Lord? Anybody else want to praise the brag of the Lord? Go ahead. I wish you would. Anybody? I'll do mine. Do it, sis. I just want to thank God for saving my soul. And I want to thank you for allowing me to do Amen. what he wants me to do. And he's brought me through so much. Amen. I've been through two strokes. Mm. I'm still carrying wood in. I'm walking, I'm talking, Amen. and it's all because of him. Amen. And I just want to Amen. praise his holy name. Amen. 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 And you got enough wood? I got plenty. <laughs> thank the Lord. Amen. Page 114, I've never, ever, never, never, ever, I want to thank the good Lord for saving me. And uh, I just want to praise his holy name. Amen. 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 He's worthy. Yes, yes, worthy is. of the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, the word he brought me out of, if I don't thank him, I just, I, I don't know. Amen. Thank God. Yes, he's good. Yeah, he was good to me when I was yet a sinner. Right. Fifty-eight years. It took. Amen. But I love the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've never been sorry. I've decided to <laughs> to run with the Lord. I'm not what I should be, and I'm not being what I'm supposed to be Amen. sometimes, and I'm sorry, but. He's never let me. He's never let me down. Even when I don't know, he's watching over me. He is, and he blesses me every day. And it's a blessing to be here. And I just thank him. Amen. 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 Bless his name. Bless the Lord. Okay.
I don't have anybody in mind to sing a special. I, you know, I'm looking, but it, it just sometimes that, that door just shuts. So let's so let's sing one ourselves. Let's sing one. You can go home and tell your uh, kin folk that you got to sing the special tonight this morning. Silent night. Key was it? I'm sorry, but it'll be just fine. I like to say, I it. It's all about this. Amen. Everybody enjoy that say, man. It's good to be back in the Lord's house. Good to see everybody. We appreciate you being here. And we know that there's a lot of snow around, and we've got several of our members still without power. They lost it on Friday. Probably won't get it back till sometime tomorrow night. So you remember them in prayer whenever you pray that God just continue to do what's needed. We appreciate everybody uh, uh, taking care on the highways. And we really do appreciate it. Good to see Pal and Debbie. Yeah. And uh, yeah. th certainly thank God for his amazing grace and his kindness. And Shannon and his wife and kids. We're so glad to see them. And appreciate them coming on this day. And we thank God for that. Let me just mention something right quick. Uh, I need to mention this a little bit later. and Maybe we can put it on the announcement sheet for next week. That everybody that hasn't put your cell number and your carrier on the message sender, uh, we need to get it so that whenever it's sent out, it'll come to you. So if you get a text and you can't get a text, you let us know. And if you can't, and I'll mention this a little bit later, let us know. Then that way we can call you about the, the snow and everything. This morning, I, the first time ever in my life, I didn't get one call to see what time we start. First time ever. And so that thing's worked pretty good. But there's several people that didn't get it. So uh, the only thing that we can do is just hope for the best and go for that, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, prepare for the best, hope for the worst, whatever it is. But uh, we're glad to see you, and we hope that it was a blessing to you. And thank God for that, and we give God the praise. There's some places it's pretty bad, but we're grateful for God's grace and God's mercy. And uh, so you be much in prayer. Pray especially for these folks, Jonathan. England, his family's out of power. They've been without since Friday night. And so you be much of prayer for him that God's will be done. He's trying to get his generator. He had it hooked up to some heat. He's trying to get hooked up to the well. So you pray for them while they're stepped back 100 years up there at uh, Bonnerville. So you pray for them. Did y'all keep power? Kept power, okay. Anybody else lost their power? Amen. Don't have power. Well, good, good. Good. So there's quite a few that's got uh, without. But we appreciate what the Lord's done and what he continues to do. And by way of announcements, this evening, 50 minutes to 5 prayer room. So you'll be much in prayer. The way the sun's shining, it'll probably cook off the everything on the roads. Then uh, we're just looking for God to do great things. And uh, he's been so good to us. We can't thank him enough. And uh, Brother Bill, I've seen a picture of his truck. He was coming up his driveway. And the back end's over towards the creek. And uh, did you get that out? The whole thing. The back side of it was over the bank. And uh, so did you get the whole thing in the creek? Finally at last. Amen. But he showed the picture and the rear end was over in it, over the bank. So uh, if you need that picture, we'll send it out. But uh, we appreciate what God's done. And that's unusual for me, Cave. <laughs> you should have called Randy. You should have called Randy. <laughs> Amen. So thank God for that. And we praise the Lord for what he's doing, what he's yet to do. Amen. So this couple of weeks tonight, we'll be having special play practice on Wednesday night. Uh, what's the play practice going to do today? Okay, they'll do play practice Wednesday night because it canceled it because of snow. And uh, so they won't be having it this evening at 3 o'clock. If you made plans to be here, I told her, I said, you've messed up my Sunday. Because they plan to eat. And I'd had all my eating around 
today at the fellowship building. So I'm going to have to make new plans. Of course, I was aggravating her, and she looked at me like, did I do that? But we thank God for his grace and mercy. Then next Sunday, we'll be having our uh, regular uh, Sunday school church service. But next Sunday night, we'll be the play practice at 5 o'clock, or the play. We'll be doing the play. Then Friday night, uh, we'll be doing rehearsal for a wedding that will be taking place on Saturday. So Paige and Jacob will be getting married at 3 o'clock next Saturday. So you'll be much in prayer about that. And if they get this kind of snow, if you get this kind of snow, we will not put it off. We will not postpone the wedding. The mail said years ago that the mail must go through. Rain, snow, sleep, shine, whatever. Haven't seen them in three days. <laughs> three days. Amen. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. And uh, I'm glad that God's grace is sufficient for every day. Amen. Everybody glad you're saved, say amen. amen. Brother Pat, when y'all having your Christmas play? They're not going to have one this year. Probably break out in revival. Amen. So ours will be the uh, 17th. And is that pretty well got any other announcement? Uh, treat bags, all the young people that's going to put them together, 6.30 or 7 o'clock, be meeting here at church. And uh, they'll probably do that in the basement since they're getting ready for uh, the wedding and everything. So just meet here, then they'll decide where they're going to go. How's that sound? Does that sound exciting to all you kids? How many of you kids, how many of you young people went out to the school and took a tube over the bank? Anybody done that? I wonder how far it would have went this morning. I wonder how far it would have went. Because the slip and slide was 300 feet and it done every inch of it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. Any problem on the finance committee meeting tomorrow night? Be meeting at what time was that? 6.30. So we'll take care of that. And uh, that'll be 6.30. So finance committee meeting. It's on the announcement list. So we're looking for God to do great things. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 3. Next is chapter 3. Praise the Lord. When you find your place, stand up and say amen. 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 <clears throat> Exodus chapter 3. When you find it, say amen. 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 I want to go down and look at these few verses and uh, maybe just try to finish what I've been on for a few weeks. Like I say, I hope it don't finish. Hope the Lord just keeps adding and adding and adding and adding and does great mighty things in our midst. We certainly appreciate what he's done, what he continues to do. And I want you to be much in prayer uh, for the Nathan Norman family, the young man that uh, got saved about uh, three weeks ago. He died this past Tuesday. He was saved about 15 days, and he went on with the Lord this past Tuesday. So I want you to pray for that family. Most of them, 99% of them is out of church and pray that God would touch them through this and maybe do something for them. Amen. And God get glory and, and be lifted up and magnified and, and thank him for everything that he's done. We appreciate what God done for him and uh, the fact that he got saved. Amen. Look at Exodus chapter number three. Let me begin ver reading verse number one. I'll go down through verse number 10. The Bible said, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock of the, uh, to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh, uh, nigh thither, hither. Put off the sh thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, 
for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows and I am come down and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the privilege to come and gather here once again in the name of Jesus and gather in your presence and thank you so much for the privilege to come to the house of God. I thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you for the snow and thank you, God, for all that you've done. And we know that it comes out of your treasure. I pray, God, that you'd help us. Thank you, Father, for these people, Lord. Oh, God, that stepped out this morning and come on and was able to do so. We pray you'd bless them and those today that's not able to come due to sicknesses and different things, Lord, power outages and, and things of that nature. I pray, God, that you'd bless them where they're added. Oh, God, that you'd get glory. I pray this morning as we gather here in the name of Jesus, what a joy it is to be able to cry out and see God's face. And I pray for the next little while that you'd move upon us and you'd get glory and you'd get honor out of everything that's done. We thank you for our visitors. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our country. And Lord Jesus, thank you once again for the great nation of Israel. We pray that you would bless them. And thank you, God, for this past week, for a great, wonderful giant step where the United States of America has declared that Israel is, Jerusalem is the capital and Lord we know that there's going to be great things happen and we know Lord that there's a lot of things and all kinds of rage but I'm so glad that you're the one that's on the throne and God in heaven I pray that you should help us at Mount Sheba Baptist Church Lord to be what you'd have us to be to do what you'd have us to do I pray today God that you'd speak our hearts may the Holy Ghost of God do what's needed we bow before you as humble as we know how we bow before you thanking you and praising you and give you glory for all things that you've done. I pray that you'd get glory here this morning, that you'd take it and use it. Oh God, may we look back to you. Give you praise, honor, and glory for the great things that you've done and the great things that you're yet to do. Thank God for Jesus and Lord Jesus, have thine own way. Oh God, breathe upon us and you're in the fresh. I pray God that you'd walk in and out of every pew, touch every heart, put your big arms around all these people and God, we pray that you'd get the glory and you'd get the honor out of everything that's done. Once again, we pray for all the power objects. We pray for the lost and those that's out of the will of God. Would you do what's needed in their life? Would you get glory out of it? And may your name be lifted up above everything else. We'll praise you. We'll glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Don't you look back in Exodus chapter number three. We've looked at several things about the voice in the flame, the voice in the flame. And I'm going to go a little bit further. Last week, we looked at some things. We looked at when this appearance came in verse number one. It came late in life. Moses was 80 years old. The second thing, the Bible teaches us the nature of this appearance in verse number two. It was miraculous. It was a miraculous thing that God did. But God's Abel. He's the one that's a miracle working God. God Almighty always does miracles. Everything he does, I'm grateful that he can do that that we can't do. He don't do the possible. He does the impossible. I'm glad that God gave that to us. And then the third thing we looked at in God too was the symbol of this appearance. The symbol of this appearance. What did it symbolize? We looked last week about the church of the living God. The bush of flame. It symbolized the church in this world. See, the church is in this world. The church has been stepped on. It's been kicked out. It's been cursed. It's been beat down. It's been burnt. It's been a lot of things. But you know what? The church still lives on for the glory of God. They've tried to put out the fire. They've tried to destroy it down through the centuries. But today, thank God, I can lift my head as well as you can. And we can say, thank God Christ is triumphant and his church marches on for the glory of God Almighty. The church, hallelujah, it's in this world. It is a symbol. Amen. Thank God that fire was talking about the symbol. That fire was talking about 
the church. That bush, talk about the church, but it's Almighty God that's speaking out of the bush. Yeah. Who was it speaking out of that bush? We found out it was none other than Jesus Christ, the yeah. Son of the living God, the preacher. You can't believe that. I do believe that. That's what the book said, glory to God. We've got a Savior that didn't start 2,000 years ago. He didn't start just last week, but it's always been for the glory of God. Jesus has always existed. Christ the, the Lord, he's always been there. He's been there with God ever since. And they started this whole thing. And we give God the praise for what he's done. It brings me down to this thing. This thought, the Christians, the church are the light of the world. When Jesus went back, he's the light of the world. When he went back, he said, you're the light of the world. What you're going to do, you're going to reflect. We have no power within ourselves. We can't generate power. But God's son can do the power through our life. And we can become the reflectors of God Almighty. You go back in the book of Genesis when God created the heavens and the earth and God created the sun and the moon and the stars. He's got all this in mind and he's looking down through the ages and giving us sort of a little view of what's going to take place. The sun that you in, it represented the S-O-N. Thank God there's where the power is. The power for this universe as far as the heat and things of that nature, it comes from the S-U-N. The light on this earth comes from the S-U-N. But God was looking down that the light of the world was going to be his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the son symbolized, typified the son of the living God. Jesus Christ has got all power. He's got all power in heaven and in earth. And the Bible said that he made the moon. The moon, it don't shine all the time. Amen. It's a reflector. And the sun goes down to the moon. And the moon represents the church of the living God. The power comes from the sun, reflects from the moon, which is the church of the living God. Amen. You get your power. You get your light. You get all all the things from God through the church of the living God. And the Lord Jesus Christ died for the church. He rose for the church. He lived for the church. And thank God he's soon coming for the church. Amen. He's the one in glory shining his way for the glory of God. And we thank him this morning for that. What a savior that he is. And then the stars. The stars. He used five words to mention. He made the stars. And he made the stars also. The stars. You say, what they represent? They represent every individual Christian. The sun shines, reflects off the moon, and it reflects off the stars. We get our power from the church, which gets it from the sun. And thank God for that, amen. Yeah. Then we are the light of the world, amen. The world's looking for a light. The world's looking for something. The world's looking for something they need. And they need God above everything else. They don't need just Baptists. They don't need just Methodists. They don't need just some kind of denomination. They need the Lord Jesus Christ above everything. You ask the average person on the street, well, we'll have you. Will money help you? Oh, they'd say, yeah, but they'll be out of it another week. Will education? Yeah, but brother, where does it go? But thank God they need Jesus above everything else. That's where we come in. We are the light of the world. The church is the light of the world. We're reflected the light of God's glory and God's magnificent power to this world in which we live in. Amen. Ain't you glad for that? Your reflectors, you go back in the tabernacle, go back in the temple. They came around and they had trimmed the wicks had trim it, had to clean the globes. Why? So that they could shine out. Jesus said to not put uh, uh, put your light under a bushel. If you put your light under a bushel, the light goes out. It's brought into just a little old space and it can't shine out. So we don't put our light under a bushel. We set it on the mountain so everybody can see it. Amen. And God fixed it that way. That's the church. The church is to be adored. The church is to be, what do you call it? Lifted up because it belongs to Jesus Christ. No power within itself. It comes from God. Then notice something else. I'm going to bring it to a close here in just a few minutes, but I may stay here for just a little while because we see several things here. You see some things, and I, I, I probably ain't going to get this finished, but let me go a little bit further because here we are at Christmas. Christmas is coming up. Everybody knows what Christmas is about. Somebody said we're going to try to put Christ back in Christmas. I've never took it out. I've always had it. Hey, man, I've always celebrated his birth. It ain't been that I've celebrated the presence of the tree or the uh, big man coming down the chimney. Hey, glory to God, I'm telling you, I've always looked at his Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the reason. Christ Jesus is the reason we celebrate. You say, preacher, it might have been in July. Yeah, and it might have been in November too. But God set aside and we have this day that we've set aside the birth of the Savior. And the birth of the Savior is what's important that he came in this world and died on the cross for us for the glory of God. We get into all these debates and everything else about whether we need a tree, don't need a tree. Whether we need this or we don't need that and all that other stuff. But brother, one thing we don't have to debate on is the fact that we need Jesus and Jesus is the reason 
for it all. And we ought to praise God for what he's done for the glory of God Almighty. Amen. Don't work Jesus into your Christmas plans. He needs your Christmas plans. Don't work Jesus into the things, amen, that might make somebody happy because of something else. He's already there, glory to God. And let's magnify him and glorify him for everything he's done for the glory of God Almighty. I want you to look at several things right quick. The Bible says there was no perhaps. There was no peradventures. Go back down and look at these verses right quick. Look at verse number 7, 8, 9, and 10. The Bible said there's no perhaps, there's no per, uh, uh, per, uh, uh, peradventure. It was no mere invitation, no mere invitation or offer that was made to Israel. God didn't come down and say, if you would treat me right, I'll do something for you. If you will accept me and invite me, I'll do something for you. He didn't do that. He didn't look down and say, perhaps I'll do it, peradventure, I'll do it. Thank God, look at the book of Exodus again. You say, preacher, what do you find in here? I find God Almighty speaking about the church of the living God through the bush. I am speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ speaking through the bush for the glory of God. On fire for the glory of God Almighty. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that appeared and we find. Instead, it was the unconditional, the unconditional emphatic declaration of what the Lord would do. What will the Lord do? Amen. You say, please, Mr. Lord, will you do this or will you do that? When you got saved, you came to God and said, I'm a sinner. I'm lost without God Almighty. You know what God done? He saves you. You didn't say, Lord, I'll give you 90% of my time if you'll save me. I'll give you this and I'll do that. Amen. I'm here to take God don't save you like that. God Amen. saves you because God just wants to Amen. save you. And when you ask God to come in your heart, he'll save you without bargaining. There is no bargaining with God Almighty. Amen. 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 I've watched some of these TV evangelists. I haven't watched them in a long time. They make their demands to God. I see some of these preachers preach the prosperity package. They make their demands to God. You don't make demands to God. You don't do that. You've got to remember that we're the subjects. He's God. We are his people. We're the servants. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Even now while he sits on the right hand of God Almighty. And brother, we don't make our demands. We don't say, God, you better do this and you better do that. I've heard this, brother, no wonder our nation's in such a mess. We've come and we think we can demand God to do this, that, and the other. When God wants us to be the humble servant that he'd have us to be for the glory of God, that Jesus is Lord, not the Father's our God Almighty. And we are the very servants of Almighty God. We're the children of God. When we got saved, God didn't come down and say, would you pick the best of three? Would you pick the best of six. When God touched your heart, he told you emphatically. He looked at you and said, you're lost and you need a Savior. Amen. God said, I've got a Savior. I've got a Savior. Amen. I'm not going to give you three choices, whether you want to go this way, this way, or that way. He said, thank God the Lord Jesus Christ. He came in this world to deliver his people, and you've got Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, preacher, I'll choose what I want to do. Let me tell you something. You'll choose your way into oblivion because God Almighty is the only one. I'm telling you, brother, I don't care what denomination you're in. I don't care what a polit political crowd you're with. I don't care if you believe in globalism and all that. Brother, Jesus is left town. They're going to be a world in bad shape. It's going to end up in the regions of the dam because there ain't but one Savior. He came Christmas Day 22,000 some years ago and he came to down Calvary. Amen. I want you to look at this. Come back in just a minute. Here's what it says. Look at verse number 8. The Bible said, he says, I am come down to deliver. He didn't say if you'll give such a thousand dollar proof God offer and then I'll send you something. He didn't take a vote. See how many people liked him, how many people didn't like him. He said, I am come down. Keep those words in your mind. I am come down, amen. He seen the mess it was in. If you go back and look at the compassion that he had, look what compassion that he had on them. Amen. He saw their sorrow. Yeah. Read it. He saw that. He looked at everything. There ain't but one way out. They've been in Egypt about 400 years, if I'm not mistaken. 
Egypt had wonderful places to eat and they had wonderful places. They had advanced education. They had some of the greatest libraries that ever was, that was ever made. And whenever the Muslims come in, they destroyed all that. But had all that, what God was permitting here, coming down 400 years, he said, deliver. Started out pretty good in Egypt, but things began to change because there was a new Pharaoh took place. Somebody else took over. And now they don't have the very man Joseph to help take care of things. Now, thank God they've come 400 years and all of a sudden you look around and brother, those things in Egypt don't look so good. They don't look so wonderful anymore. They're beginning to get sick of those things. And, and but, <coughs> getting sick of those things, hear God Almighty. The Bible says that he permitted old Pharaoh to let these people make, make mortar and, and make bricks and things of that nature. They were uh, under the taskmasters, which is very rough. And brother, it come to a time that the people of Israel, thank God they started crying out. They started doing something. Amen. Thank God I'm here to tell you. God knows what you're going through. God knows where you're at. God's heard your cry and he's hearing it right now. Amen. God's ears bent towards Mount Sheba and all these other churches and all Christians. Let me tell you something. Bless God. You ain't going to get it from the world. You ain't going to get it from some soother. You're going to get it from God Almighty. He knows. He knows. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you need for the glory of God. And sometimes God has got to make us fall out with what's around us so we can see God Almighty and him only for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So he got a little bit sick of that. He says, I am come down to deliver. And the word of God says that his word shall not return void. Amen. Shall not look in Isaiah 55 verse 11 when you get home. His word shall not turn unto him void, but shall accomplish that which he pleases. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto he sends it. Thank God many times we forget what this said. I seen where the Pope's changing the Lord's prayer. Because he's a dope. He really ain't a Pope, he's a dope. Amen. What do you expect? When you're on your last leg and you're putting things together uh, religiously and you're coming down and you're looking for a dream, you're looking for a dream to unite the world through organized religion. That's the best you can get. So what you got to do is be a little God. The Lord's prayer is right. Amen. That's the Bible prayer. That's the prayer that we should be praying when we pray after that kind. But God's word teaches us. Hear the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad he gave us the word of God. And the word of God, it supersedes anything else. It overrules anything else. I don't care, bless God, if the Southern Baptists get together in Independent Baptists. I don't care if the hard shell. I don't care, praise God, where they're from. If they get together and they voted to be so, it's not so, amen. Yeah. The word of God, you can't improve on it. You can't change it, Lord of God. You've got a perfect book in your hand because it came from a perfect God that sent a perfect Savior that gave a perfect spirit that God could draw you to himself and save you by the amazing grace of God. Let me look at something else right quick. Something else. We will look at this typical picture here. There's a prophetic picture. Way back to the book of Acts, chapter number three, verses one through 10, prophetical picture. Here's something that's taking place, and it's dealing with the divine incarnation. The divine incarnation. Jesus is incarnated. I don't belong to the church of the Immaculate Conception. Is it macular or immaculate? Beats all I ever say. Amen. Thank God you say, preacher, does it matter? It don't take a backslidden Baptist or somebody lost to ask that question. Because it do matter. It does matter. The Lord Jesus was incarnated. Incarnated. Not reincarnated. Some folk believe in reincarnation. Amen. One lady at school years ago, Stephen was in her class, and she said in the form of life, she was a goat. <laughs> After talking to her and see some of the things she did, I said, she's still a goat. <laughs> oh, preacher, I wouldn't do that. That's why they're over our teaching. Bless God, we wouldn't do nothing. We wouldn't do nothing. I went into his class and talking about his grades, and he had made a seventy, and I talked to the lady, the teacher, and I come in, there's a, Statue of Buddha. 
sitting under the desk. And I said, what's that? She said, I have the kids come up and rub his belly before they take a test. I looked at Stephen and I said, you don't rub that fellow's belly, do you? I said, didn't want raise you to be a choir. <laughs> he's making 70. She said, what do you want? I said, I don't see about improving my son's grade. She said, he's making a 70. What more do you want? <laughs> Amen. That's back when you get in the class. You go in and see what's going on. I went and see what's going on. There's no such thing as reincarnation. If I see somebody that used to be a butterfly, I swat them. (laughs) You go through this process because after you get to a certain place, then you get perfection after you go through all these different steps of reincarnation. How many souls did God start out with? One soul. He breathed in Adam's nostrils, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. One soul. Animals had souls, but not like him. They had a spirit. Amen. So there's nothing dying. He got a soul. Then God puts him to sleep and makes him a bride. Brings her to him out of the rib. Amen. Amen. He gets him to name her. Two souls. First one got his body out of the dirt. Dust, really. Dust is cheaper than dirt. Did you know that? You can't sell dust. I can sell dirt. I can get pretty good money out of dirt. But I've never asked Pat to put it in a bag. Let me take the bank and see what collateral I can get on dust. Where's Kathy? Would you loan some money on the bag of dust? So God took the rib out of the man, closest thing to his heart. Closest protector. That's what a rib is. It's protector. Amen. And he made him a bride. She got her body from the man. That's why it says that man brought his life, woman brought her life from man. And he gave it back to them. Then we came together. And then they had children. That's called procreate. So they had a child. They had another child. And you know the story. So as we go down through time, they figure there's been over 35 billion people that has lived in the, on the earth since day one. About 35 billion. It might rose by now. 35 billion people. Can you imagine that? Now, if we take one soul, the man dies, and he comes back to something else, where do you get them others? Where do you get them others? It's just a bunch of false science. That's all that it is. Because God made the soul. But notice, let me go on, or I'll be here all day long. The Bible says, here it is. We find in this wonderful picture the divine uh, incarnation, the divine compassion, which prompted the unspeakable gift. Where did the unspeakable gift come from? We're celebrating the unspeakable gift. We're going to be celebrating it a little bit more in about two weeks. Matter of fact, we celebrate it all year long, the unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. What was his unspeakable gift? Who was his unspeakable gift? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. Go back, Genesis 3, 15. And see, God don't talk about the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And God told in Genesis 3, 15 that from the seed of the woman that he was going to bruise the head of the seed of the serpent. That happened in Calvary. That happened, thank God. The devil bruised his heel, but he busted the devil's head. Amen. And God gave it way back then. Let me hurry along or I'll get into this. It'll be over my head and yours too. I'm sure he's seen the affliction of my people. That's what he says. My people which are in Egypt. God contemplated in, uh, uh, the wretched condition of sinners and their need for deliverance. Deliverance is what was needed. Deliverance is what's needed here this morning. We need deliverance. We must remember yeah, that, that, right. that whenever we talk about uh, Christ Jesus, yeah. we talk about the redemption, we talk about the Redeemer. It's for no other reason than redemption to bring people to God and get them saved before yeah. it's too late. Amen. Amen. Let me hurry along right quick. The Bible teaches us. Yeah. We look at all this and God's Word teaches us. The incarnation itself. Look at these words. I 
am come down. Did he ask permission? He didn't go up and say, now, Miss Mary, you know, there are going to be some inconvenience here. There are going to be some pain with what's fixing to happen. Y'all with me? He didn't go up and say, now, Miss Mary, things are going to be great. When they find out that you're engaged to Joseph and they find out you're going to have a baby and you ain't even married, they're going to lift you in high esteem. They're going to praise you and they're going to worship you. Absolutely not. She bore a reproach. That was a reproach. But thank God I'm glad that God reminded her and confirmed that that which was born in her, that that was conceived in her, was of the Holy Ghost of God Almighty. Amen. She never knew a man. Never glory to God the Lamb forevermore. God! dispatch the angel of God and the Holy Ghost down and that that was conceived in her. Hey, can you sit down in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse number 7 and 8. I am come down. I am come down. You in a heap of trouble. There's problems everywhere. Things are going on but thank God. Don't you worry. I am come down. Hallelujah to God. Hey, what a savior. Thank God what God said, some said 2,000 years ago, I am come down. It's going to be a reproach, a lot of things, but God's son said, I see their suffering, I see their sorrow, I see their need, and I want to be their savior for the glory of God. Woo! All right. Thank you, Jesus. Preacher, I mastered that Old Testament. I don't even read it anymore. You may not read anymore, but you ain't mastered it. I guarantee you that. You see Jesus on every page. You see the Son of God on every page. What a Savior. We can move on forward way down until today. There's some experiences that took place. Amen. You wasn't there when God conceived his own son in the womb of Mary. You wasn't there. If you think you was, I believe we can find out and prove you're wrong. Amen. Because Amen. Amen. you wasn't. Amen. But God's son was looking further down the road. Amen. He was looking yes. at your ending yes. instead of your beginning. Yes. He was looking to see where you're at and what's going on. Yes. Satan made a mess. He started talking to Eve. He wasn't Eve's problem altogether. She started giving the fruit to her husband. Her husband took it willfully because he didn't want to lose that woman that God gave him. Amen. The Lord Jesus came, and he came 2,000 years ago. And when he went to Calvary, hey amen, he could have called 10,000 angels. He could have said, get me down. But that woman that God gave him, which was the church of the living God, which is the bride of Christ, he said, I'm not going to lose her. I come to buy her back, amen. And thank God there ain't but one way to buy her back, and that's through my redemption. And thank God he went all the way, shed the blood. And you and I today, we can look up and say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, glory to God. What a Savior, hallelujah to God. Thank God for this man called Jesus. Glory to God, the Lamb forevermore. I'm going to heaven, not to hell, because God loved me so much. Woo, glory to God. Amen, what a Savior. Glory to God, the Lamb forevermore. I am come down. Don't that sound good? Won't you say that, what God said? I am. I ain't got time to cover the word I. I ain't got time to cover the two words combined, I am. I don't have the time to cover the word come. And I don't have time to cover the word down. Glory to God and the Lamb forevermore. Where is he at? He was at God's right hand. And God said, I am come down. I'm come down through this burning bush. I've come down, thank God. There's several places in the Bible that shows where God's son showed himself. I'll get to them a little bit later in the Old Testament. Some folks says he didn't even start to 2,000 years ago. Boy, are they badly mistaken. God's son has always been. Hallelujah to God. I'm glad. 
Hallelujah. He got his name Jesus when he came in this world when he was virgin born. The Bible said his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. He was God in the past. He's God now. And he always will be God. Amen. What a Savior. And he said, I'm come down. Then you stop just to me and all of you. If you've got a little mirror or something, you look at yourself. I want you to look at yourself. And I want you just, when you get home, just look at it. And just look at the fact. Here it is. You were the one who was lost. You were out to sea going down for the last time. You were headed for a burning hell. And all of a sudden, thank God, here comes a man. Here comes a God. Here comes a Savior that steps aside from that royal diadem and that regal robe and all that. The, uh, I'm glad that he came from the throne. And he came down to earth. And whenever he stepped down, he said, Lord and God, Randy, I want you to know I am come down. I am come down, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Bless the Lord, it's Jesus, amen. Now, because of that unspeakable gift, because of this man called Jesus, because he was willing to come down, because he is the great I am, we don't have to go to hell today. We look up and say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Glory to God, the Lamb forevermore. Hey! Hallelujah, what a Savior. Glory to God and the Lamb forevermore. I'm glad I'm going to heaven, amen. Heaven's real, heaven's sweet, heaven's wonderful. And thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Son, if I don't light you, would you? If I don't light you far, brother, you just ain't got nothing to light with you. Amen. Praise God, what about that? Hallelujah. Let's look just a little bit further here and I'm gonna close. Amen. That unspeakable gift. I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. We see all this. Then that incarnation self, I am come down. It was 1,500 years later. 50, anybody here 1,499 years old? Anybody here 1,600 years old? You're not. 1,500 years later. After he said, I come down, when Jehovah Jesus, Jehovah Jesus, let me just explain. This is God's son. This is God. Amen. The Bible said when Jesus left his father's house on high and he came down to these scenes of sin and suffering, he came down. Jesus came down. How would you call his name? He picked up the name Jesus because that name means he come to save his people from their sins. Amen. The I am has come down. The I am has walked among us. And thank God for that, amen. amen. Then there's something else, the purpose. The purpose of the incarnation. Why should there be a virgin birth? Michael, won't you get a song? Why should there be a virgin birth? Couldn't we use Joseph? Wouldn't Joseph been good enough? What a man. Wouldn't he been enough? What about Noah? Noah done some great and wonderful things. Couldn't we use Noah? What about as we go on through the Old Testament? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Why couldn't we use them? Why? The incarnation. When man sinned, which is Adam. Adam and Eve sinned. They lived in the Garden of Eden. God made them outside the garden and placed them in the garden. And that's where God gave them to keep and walk with him in the cool of the day and fellowship. They were clothed in the best that heaven could give, which was the Shekinah glory of God. That means that they were in compassion with the presence of God at all times. Man sinned. They were driven out of the garden. They weren't asked to leave. They didn't go to the Buckingham County Courthouse and get a writ of possession. He drove them out. Lest they go back and take of the fruit of life, the tree of life. Sin entered, so man began to die. That's where procreation come in. Adam and Eve didn't have to have children. Amen? But they sinned. So death come upon them. Death was in the bloodstream. So they started deteriorating. They started dying. They started getting old. They started getting sick in the life day. Man died. 
Next generation comes on. Go back and look at the Bible obituary in Genesis chapter number 5. He lived so many years and got children and so many years and he died. Matthew, don't say that. You got just a minute. Matthew, don't say that. When you talk about Jesus being the son of God, son of Abraham, he goes down and says, so-and-so lived so many years and he begot. There's no death in Matthew. When he looks at all of them, because in Jesus, 42 generations, there's Jesus. 42 generations, here's Jesus. What are you saying, preacher? Nobody dies in Jesus. He's the life. But sin entered in. And sin came upon all people. Everybody. Everybody that's ever lived and will ever live. Sin. You're born in sin. Shaping iniquity. And there's one big problem that we had. We could not. We could do a little bit of turnover leaves. We couldn't stay with the leaves overturned. Our conscience need to be dealt with. So the Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful Savior, he had to come and bring one thing, the most important ingredient in all time, in all history, was the blood. Amen. Our blood was tainted by sin. It was handed down from our fathers and our mothers, amen, and he came down to every generation, and we needed somebody that would step on the scene. Amen. That was perfect. There wasn't one could do it, but one could do it. His name was Jesus. Jesus, he bypassed the man. Man, Joseph was not the father. He wasn't the daddy of Jesus Christ. Mary gave him a body. She was his mother, but not the mother of Mary. And the Bible said that blood that Jesus had in his body through the virgin birth, that blood's what he took to Calvary. Your blood was tainted. You couldn't get into heaven with sinful blood. So God son, he brought perfect blood. He brought perfect blood. And he walked up Golgotha's mountain. Somebody said he fell. He didn't fail. He never failed anything he ever done. Amen. Amen. Well, why did, why did old Simon or Simeon have to carry the cross? Because he was the real sinner. That's the reason. Amen. Jesus was a substitute. The real sinner carried it to the top. That's as far as he could go. Amen. He moved aside. The substitute stepped up. His name's Jesus. Thank God. Perfect blood. Yes, sir. And that's where he died. What did he offer to God? Did he offer bullocks? Did he offer pigeon doves? I think the first thing he said when he was nailed to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What Jesus was saying is hold back your judgment. Hold back until they know, until they have heard. One of these days, Jesus come get his church. Judgment's going to fall. And there won't be nobody there to pray, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. That blood was shed, and the first thing Jesus did, he took his own blood, took it to heaven, placed it on the mercy seat. He came back down to earth. Thank God what a Savior. And he started looking. Amen. He sent people to the United States of America. So when we come along, how would you like to be in a colony that never heard of God? How would you like to be in a colony or a state? Never heard of God. How would you like to be in a nation that they've absolutely erased the name of God off of everybody's mind? I went to a nation like that a few years ago right after the revolution of Romania. When we went there, the blue smoke was still boiling. Fires were still burning and blood was still wet. We went. Ceausescu, he had been a ruler of that country for years. And he, anybody that was caught with a piece of scripture, they tortured them to death. Then they burnt the scripture. They destroyed it. They kept it away from the people. There was people got in at the cost many times of their own lives. Thank God whenever Chelchesco and his wife was taken out and on a heap of rocks, they were shot. They entered into hells where they went. The door opened up. And we decided that we'd go over and a couple of fellows from Tennessee and we went over and, and we were there whenever it all stopped and we came by the uh, blowed up cars and things of that nature. And we came into that big city, looked up the next morning, looked like a war zone because that's what it was. 
And we was able to bring the Bible. We was able to bring scriptures. We was able to go into that place. We was able to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I walked into some of those meeting houses. The hand, the meeting houses were when they summons the community, the little village that didn't have much of anything, they'd come to the meeting. And if somebody ratted on somebody or just kind of made a gesture that you might be in question, they would come up and they would send it to you. They'd take you outside the back. And there was a great big white wall there. They'd stand you up against that wall and they'd shoot you. They'd kill you right on the spot. And that's what they did. When we walked through the door, there was great marble plaques and it had the hammer and the sickle and it had the socialistic uh, marks and all that stuff. And I remember when I got there, I took that King James Bible. I raised it up under that thing, glory to God. And I said, where are you now, Chell Chesq? Amen. And I said, God still reigns. Hallelujah to God. Let me tell you some folk, there's places that's never known anything about the Bible. In America, we've just about took it for granted. Today, let's go back and look at this scripture. And let's see that God said, I am come down. I've come down to deliver. Amen. Let's all stand. Ain't God good. Ain't God good. You still see Jesus through that burning church. It's not consumed. They've tried to stomp it out. They've tried to put it out. But thank God. You stand as an edifice, if you want to call it that, of the grace of God in 2017. You stand as a prime example of the goodness of God in this world in which we live. The world's crying, do away with him, do away with him. But God's church is saying, praise be to God. Glory to God, amen. He said, I am come down in Exodus. He came down in the Gospels. He went back to heaven, but soon he's coming back. Amen. That could be our Christmas gift this year. Yes. Could be it. Amen. I don't know about you, but if he comes before uh, uh, December the 25th, it won't bother me at all. It'd be fine with me, amen. Matter of fact, I, I don't want to be facetious or, or mean or nothing, but if he's looking for somebody to make a motion, I make a motion. Amen. 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 You mark it down. You mark it down. Things are going to happen at a breakneck speed. It already has. You've seen history. You've seen prophecy. You've seen God do some things. It's telling you people in the church of the living God, you better look up. Amen. If you've used any time to serve God, you better do it now. We better get rid of all our gripes and all our junk and all that stuff, and we better zero in on the lost and say, God, please help them, and let's win somebody to Jesus this year. Amen, brother. That was a great stab that the President of the United States declared that Jerusalem is the capital. Amen. Now it's going to cause some trouble. It's going to cause some trouble. But there was trouble in his coming when he came as a virgin born son of God. And brother, it's going to sort of probably be a rub. But I'm glad that God's got somebody waiting in the wings and, and all this is ready. And just as soon as it gets ripe, Jesus is going to say to the church, that's every born again believer. Come up here there. And we're going, and there'll be somebody step out. Somebody will step out and declare them to be the Messiah. They will be the Antichrist. I mean, you don't have to worry about that. If you're worried about who the Antichrist is, you need to get to know the Christ. Amen. He's coming. I'd just soon meet you in the air as meet you here this evening. I'd just soon step down Hallelujah Square and Glory Boulevard. Amen. Yeah. Is there anything else I know? But preacher, I got some living to do. Man, you know what living is. Why might sing this song if you got a need? Would you come to somebody? Take a minute and just thank him. Take a minute and praise him. Who else but God? Who else but God? Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way. And bond as could be, but the Savior in love gave me peace from above when He reached down His hand. Do you remember that reach? Do you remember when He reached down to you, as though you were the only person in the world? He didn't have to try three times. He had his eye on you. He had to reach. 
and he came to where you was at through the gospel. While you were sinking for the last and final time. Sing it now. How my heart does, does rejoice when I hear his sweet voice in the tempest to him I then flee there to leave his arm. His arm, safe safe and secure from all. Remember that? Do you remember that? He's going down the lights time. And he showed me I am come down. Could go free. Then he lifted my feet, gave me gladness complete. Since he reached down his hand for me. You mind the Lord while we sing. Savior, reach down for me. He had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son. 